Welcome back to my YouTube tutorials. Remember to like, share and subscribe. Hey guys, today we're going to be making an American football topper. It's the first time I'm making this topper considering that I live in the Caribbean and we only play soccer here. A special shout out to the birthday boy Andre who was here all the way from Canada and he really loved this cake. Let's get started. So I'm needing a piece of fondant that has already been colored. It's a darkish burgundyish color. It was a bit too dark, but I made it at night and that's expected. Now I'm just forming my ball, a ball. I like to start from circles, trying to make it as seamless as possible to work with. Also, I had a piece of sponge. It was a bit too firm in the end, but just to keep my topper on and I covered it with plastic wrap so that it wouldn't actually be touching the sponge. Now I'm focusing on making the pointy tips at the end of this ball, which is very crucial and you have to pay attention to what you're doing. I take my time, it took me about 10 minutes to form this ball, taking it from end to end. As you see, I would cut my hands and drop the ball in between, creating a bit of a cup. And I'll do that on both ends, back and forth, until I get the desired shape in which I like. This really took me a while, so I just speed up the video for you guys. Fun fact, when you're working with mediums, especially sugar mediums, and you really need your stuff to firm up nicely and keep its shape, you can add a mixture of gum paste and fondant, which is what I actually have working with here. Also, when you're working on a topper, it's really good to have an image nearby of what you're working on. So it's night time and I had to put on my spotlight. I hope you guys can see properly. So what I'm doing now is rolling out a white piece of fondant on my surface. Depending on the medium you're working with, you will have to use some sort of powder or confectioner's powder or cornstarch so that your, it wouldn't stick to your surface. However, I am using a very smooth surface, so I don't need that. I'm using my favorite blade ever. You can use a knife with a ruler to get straight cuts but this really makes my job quicker, easier, more efficient, faster, you name it. It's one of my favorite tools. I got it a few years back. It's actually for making clay pieces, but it can work. So what I'm doing here now, I'm cutting a few strips, those that would be used for the shorter length and also for the middle length, which is the longest. In total, I would need nine, eight across and one down. I had to eventually thin out these. Um, after placing them on my ball, which you would see me do later in the video because it turned out a little bit too thick and bulky for my liking Just to make the ball look a little bit more realistic So when I'm trying to get even pieces what I usually do is line them up on each other And then I would use my tool and I would cut straight across in each edge But if you're not really good, you can use a ruler um, I've been doing this for a long time, so I'm kind of used to using my tool anyways and eyeballing it. But I advise you to use a ruler and do some measurements. Yeah, so my ball does have a flat side. I'm not too happy about that. After realizing that my sponge was just a bit too firm, so try and use a soft piece of sponge. What I did was cut another piece of sponge and try and make a little tilt it a bit more up seeing that my ball will be sitting in an upward direction on the cake. So I'm using my tool right now to so just make a few indentations um, where the lines are and this makes it really easy. Imagine trying to use a knife to do this. So this is why I love using this tool. I can see if I find it and put it in the description box. When working on your toppers, you want to add as much details as possible. And as simple as this is a ball, Adding a little bit of treading, all the little bit of details, not missing anything, even down to the texture of the ball, will actually improve the quality and the finish of your topper. So try and pay attention to details, look at the photos, and see how best you can create the image that is in your picture. So right now, I'm using a cutter that I had previously from one of my Wilton sets. Just to make it easier, you can use a round cutter or you can eyeball it. And I'm using as a tool my favorite a toothpick because <laughs> it's more efficient and I've grown up actually working with toothpicks on cakes so the end of my ball wasn't perfect but all my little details will give a bit of distraction for that so 
So I'm going to be adding the strip on the middle of my ball. Now I'm just going to eyeball this to try and get it on even ends of the seam and cutting it right where the design ends. You know, you can use a little bit of water to apply yours, but my ball is pretty sticky, so I didn't need to do that. I'm going to be using my balling tool. You can use the end of one of your paint brushes, or you can also use a toothpick and widen the hole if need be. So I just made a placement of where I would like my first hole to be, and then I would use my tool, or you can use a knife, just to make an invisible line. So all of my holes are in a straight line going upwards and everything has a nice neat placement. On your ball you would need 8 holes. I miscounted at first and placed 6 and then I had to go back in and create the other 2, two holes. But this is the basic idea of how you would like to place your holes going up that line. Yeah, so as I said, I had to replace that middle strip. It was just too thick and bulky. And as you can see, the difference here now is where I put on a thinner piece. And I'm also going to make my laces a lot more thinner. So I'm just using one that I had previously as a guideline to recut the others. You know, it's really good sometimes you may have to go back in, take away things, add things. That's quite okay. As long as at the end results, you have a very neat finish. That's all that really matters and it looks more realistic. So as you can see, I have to use a little bit of water um, just to place my laces in the right placement. Um, I was just going to place them across but then I realized that did not have enough definition and they definitely needed to look a little bit more lace-like. So what I did was curve them at the bottom um, and then I discovered a little trick with my toothpick <laughs> where I can actually fold them over the toothpick at the tip like I'm going to show you now and you can actually get that little curve and it looks more lace like where the lace is tucked in between the hole. So I'm going to do that right through and I'll be back with you. So this is pretty time consuming as though it seems pretty simple. It took me approximately about four hours to work on this ball, um, including recording time, um, I guess, also because I was recording. But yeah, it is pretty time consuming. So sometimes when you're doing something new, you like to experiment like myself. And I love that painted effect on the ball, you know, the football, that rustic look. And I tried it on my ball. But eventually, as the white um, food coloring that I used to paint on the strips started soaking in, <laughs> man, it started observing all the color from the ball and it was just an epic fail. I eventually had to remove it, wipe it off, thinking that, okay, well, my ball is wet because it was damp still that night, I'll try it again in the morning. So I took it off, decided, hey, I'm gonna try it again in the morning. <laughs> but it didn't work out either. So what I'm doing here now is just adding some detail to my ball using a number one tip. And this by itself took me about half an hour just to create that texture. So it's the next morning, guys. And as you can see, I have wiped off that messy looking finish on my on my topper I go in again with my brush trying to paint it with that white color in and the same thing happens so eventually I just ended up getting some white fondant and rolling it to the thinnest capacity that I can and cutting out some strips equal strips to put at the ends so then if you're interested in knowing how to remove um, 
coloring and so forth off of the cake if you've painted it I just damp myself a nice piece of bouncy and I would wipe and wipe and damp and keep replacing the paper towels um, don't use a towel that's disgusting and also the fibers will get onto your fondant and your work will look pretty messy so here I go putting on my strips of fondant and they are perfect oh my god that is so clean that is so much neater than that sloppy painted work I was attempting in the first place and um, it doesn't stay there to make it blend into the ball because I still want it to have that rustic painted look I would now use the same tool and I would make the same pattern on top of the white strips that I did on the ball itself and don't forget to put in your lines and the stitching and the sides and that's the final product Thank you guys for viewing my video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Stay posted for more, so press the notification bell.